Special Operations, Covert Ops, Espionage, The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Brad has an interesting question. He says, um, the biggest need for Knox, how are they chosen and are they still relevant in today's intelligence operations directed against China and Russia? I think they are. I had a, a lot of contact with Knox. Uh, some of my colleagues don't care to, but I always had a, a, um, a knock is like a surgical instrument. You cannot use it just, you cannot use him or her and just about anything you want. You have to use them for very specific reasons. And the fact that they have a non-official cover, could it be business, it could be something else, that gives them wonderful low profile access uh, that can be absolutely uh, irreplaceable. And I worked with a number of them. I have a lot of them are my friends. Myself, I would never wanna be one of them because they really have a hard life. It's they're at the pointy end of the spear. And a lot of inside officers, I was what is known as an officially covered or inside officer, a lot of them have never worked with Knox and don't appreciate both the limitations, but also the opportunities that Knox present. I love all of my friends who are Knox. They did wonderful work, but I think sometimes the structure that manages them, uh, they don't understand the opportunities that these uh, very, very loyal, very brave officers are doing. Jim, to the best of your ability, we you mentioned non-official cover, but for people in our audience who aren't familiar with that term or what a knock does, can you sort of give an overview of how they're brought in, how they're trained, how they're deployed, and, and what they do? Well, I mean, I never went through it, but unlike me, I mean, I had uh, State Department cover. Some people have military cover. That's official cover. But these people would get um, some American company or some other company to sponsor them as a, an official employee. And so they have to basically do full-time job for their cover provider. And then they have to do their clandestine work out of, you know, you know, out of the, the rhythm of business. And the uh, training, they, we go through cycles where we train them only by themselves. Then we have other cycles where we swing around and they train with us, but they train an alias so that we can't compromise. If somebody's bad on the inside, we can't compromise. In fact, I'll tell you, I know the true names of very few knocks. I know a lot of knocks, but I know them by another name. And I really don't want to know their real names. So they get, they're chosen uh, through a psychological profile that's different than mine. The, these people are standalones. They are the kind of people that don't require a lot of uh, camaraderie. They, they, they can act on their own a lot. And me, I'm, I'm much more of a people person. I like talking to my fellow officers and things. They don't have the luxury of doing that. So all their communications is through their covert communication uh, device. And, and periodically we may meet them in person somewhere where they're not compromised. But um, it's a very, very difficult job. If one of my children was say, were to say that they'd like to become a knock, I'd say, you really need to think about this. It's a hard <laughs> life. It's a hard life. It's, it's very necessary. We have to have these people. But they're... <laughs> It's a, it's a necessary. Yeah, it sounds like really you kind of have to be a loner, right? Yeah, to an extent, to an extent, or be able to compartment that life and do it. I have again, I have a lot of friends who are Knox, and I respect exactly what they did because they did things that I couldn't do. And you mentioned earlier when you were talking about the Knox that you were turning the the asset over to, how risky it was for them. And part of that is because when you're under official cover, you have the support of the United States government the ambassador. But if you're a knock, if you're a civilian working in a country, you don't have that same type of safety net, correct? Correct. I mean, I have a, I had a black passport, a diplomatic passport. And if I'm caught spying or committing some indiscretion, I'm told to leave the country within 24 hours. I'm declared persona non grata. That doesn't, that diplomatic protection does not extend to a knock. A knock is basically in jail. Um, I mean, their lives can be at stake.